G'day guys, Mick here. So I packed up yesterday afternoon, came for an impromptu trip out into the Wadigans. Um, beautiful night, nice and quiet. A little bit colder than I thought though. But anyway, I, I thought while I'm out here, I'd do a quick video on the VMS HD, uh, 700 HDX. Now, as you may be aware, I purchased one of them a couple of months back from the four-wheel drive Supercenter stockist. Um, and I've, I've had very mixed, mixed feelings about it. Um, as an off-road navigation software, it, it shows a lot more trails. It shows walking trails and things like that in the off-road mode, which that's brilliant. But navigation-wise, um, navigation-wise, so to be able to tell me, okay, I need to get from here to here by car, in the off-road mode, I think it's really lacking. So I'll give you a look at that. Um, I'll give you a look at a couple of tricks I found to try and get around that. Now I haven't fully tested these, but uh, from what I've from what I've been able to work out so far, it's really good. The on-road mode, it's very similar to any other GPS unit, um, Navman, TomTom, whatever else. It is actually provided, I believe, by TomTom. Um, it has the option to select whether you want to take four-wheel drive trails or not. Um, right? With most, it allows you to select whether you want to do toll roads, highways, things like that. Well, this also allows four-wheel drive. Um, it does, in your points of interest, it does have a whole heap of free campgrounds. And my f initial thought was that'd be brilliant because for people just trying to get out in the bush, they'll be able to find new places they haven't seen yet. Uh, I have found what I believe to be quite a big issue with that. And again, I'll show you that very shortly. Uh, once I've packed up from here, I'll head over to the Pines Campground and I'll show you that issue. Um, but yeah, there, there's a couple of tricks I've found that should hopefully help to get around some of this and I'll try and give you a bit of a look bit of a look at that too so this is going to be a bit of a bitter video because some of it's going to, going to be filmed out here in the Wadigans and some of it's going to have to be filmed at home where I've got decent internet access in my computer so um yeah I'll give you a bit of a look and I'll give you at the end of the video I'll give you my overall opinion on the VMS 700 HDX and whether or not I feel they're actually worth the money. Um, or whether I think you should save for another unit such as the HEMA, or just download a free app such as Gaia GPS. Um, so I'll give you that opinion at the end of it. And yeah, hopefully this video will help you guys to make up your minds. And for those of you with the VMS, hopefully it will help you to get more out of your unit. All right. Cheers. There we go. Alright, so camp's packed up. Fire's been doused with water to make sure it's out properly. <coughs> and now I'm going to show you the first thing I had an issue with with the VMS when I first bought it. I went down to the supplier at Gosford uh, because I wasn't able to order the reverse camera online and that was a big thing for me is I wanted the reverse camera to go with it um, so they weren't allowing me to record uh, to order the reverse camera online so I had to go down to the supplier at Gosford to purchase it and I did that all well and good the guys down at Gosford are brilliant but the big issue I had was that the VMS wasn't recognizing the camera. Um, it did once or twice, it worked all right, and then for some reason it just would not read the camera whatsoever. So the way they're made is when you put it on into reverse, it's supposed to automatically turn the camera on. Now I'm in reverse, and now it comes on. So you can say it does have a bit of a delay, but it works. It wasn't working previously. 
it wouldn't work before, uh, wouldn't turn on at all. So I contacted the guys at Gosford and they, no dramas, no questions, they went and um, got me, or they grabbed another unit and we tested it out. I took my unit down there with the reverse camera and everything, we tested it out and straight away their unit picked up the reverse camera. They let me take my SD card out because I already had a few waypoints set. Let me take the SD card out, put it in the new unit, and yeah, just handed me the new unit and off I went. So thumbs up to the guys and um, the supplier at Gosford. Um, bought a couple of things from them since and they've been really good. So next thing, I'm gonna go for a bit of a drive to show you what I'm talking about. So stick with me and I'll show you what I mean in regard to uh, the, the free campgrounds on the in the um, VMS on-road mode. I'll show you what I mean there. So just stick with me. Okay, so as you've just seen, I've just pulled into the Pines Campground. Um, and from here, I know Turpentine Campground is just over the other side here. Um, I know exactly how to get there from here. It's a very easy route. But the VMS tries to tell me a different way. Um, for people coming into an area that they're unsure of or that they don't know, this is an issue I've found with the VMS, is that you can type in... A campground one of their free campgrounds but it takes you a different way now I'm going to show you this as an example here I'm parked in the pines again turpentine is just over here Casarina is just up here I'm going to put in turpentine and show you where it tries to take me so let's come back out of there go find find places free campgrounds and it will load a list so let's go to turpentine campground now you can see where it's showing me to go there. This is off Howes Road. Now I know for a fact the Turpentine Campground is around here, not down here. So we'll put this in anyway and I'll show you where it's trying to take me. So as you can see again, Turpentine is just up here, not all the way over here. So let's follow the VMS. So just cruise on cruising out of the pines now it's taking it easy now this is a very easy road uh, to get into suitable for any sort of vehicle coming up into here now the GPS is completely lost it's got no idea where the hell I am um, admittedly this is the street mode not the off-road mode but it, for those that don't know the area and are trying to find new places, this is the sort of thing I feel it needs. That it needs to give us directions and know where we're going. So I'll stop filming for a little bit until we get up onto the main road. Although well, actually we'll be up there in a second, so bugger it. You can suck it up and watch for a minute. I'm just going relatively slow through here. Now here we are on the main road. It's telling me to go Creek Road now. There's no way in hell I'm going Creek Road. I know what Creek Road's like. But anyway, let's follow it. Let's see what we say. See, it's pretty much saying I'm already on Waddigan Forest Road. And it's telling me to look down left on the Creek Road. Now, I'm not. I know Creek Road. I know it's not a good road. And there's no way in hell a beginner would want to get in there and well these campgrounds are meant to be easy now you see this little road just to the right hand side here 
the pines takes you, uh, the turpentine is down there. But the vermis is telling me to come left here. So here we are on the creek road. I'm not following this because again, I know what it's like. Or is it Gap Creek Road? One of the two. Anyway, so we'll cruise down here. It's pretty much telling me to do a U-turn, to be honest. It's telling me to follow this and do a U-turn. Now I'm just gonna, I'm not doing a friggin', I'm not following this. I'm solo and I'm not heading out into this. So I'm glad the reverse camera is working these now. Alright, we're gonna stop filming, heading back out onto the main road. Now it's telling me to go right onto Waddington Forest Road. So again, anybody that doesn't know this area would be getting pretty bloody confused by now. Again, this little turn right here is down to Turpentine Campground. So we'll follow this. I know I probably shouldn't be using the camera while I'm trying to drive, but anyway. So we're on Mordigan Forest Road, it's not too bad. Stop recording until we get to the next bend. Okay, now it's telling me to turn left in 200 metres. We're coming up to the turn for the Pines camp, uh, picnic area, which is right here. As you can see, the sign here on my right hand side is the sign for the Pines picnic area. A couple of trail bikes coming up. Now it's telling me to turn left. Here. It's telling me to turn left into here. So let's put it in first gear. Remember, Pines, Turpentown, all that. Turpentine and everything, they're supposed to be easy roads. Places that anybody can get into. Now this is what it's telling me to go down. I don't think I'll be going all the way down here because I have walked this track and it's pretty rough. Actually, from what it's telling me, looking at that, that's telling me to follow the Abbots Falls walking trail. That's not just, you know, follow the bloody road. That's part of the Abbots Falls walking trail. Now, we've got a bog hole here. I'm gonna do a U-turn and come back out of here because I don't want to try and push through this on my own. Okay, so with difficulty, I've done a U-turn. Um, I'm heading back out onto the main road. Now, it's telling me to go down Howes Road. As I said, it's telling me to go past the um, Abbots Falls walking trail, which is actually just near where I was camping last night. Fucking stupid strap. Um, it's telling me to go pretty much where I was camping last night and then follow a walking trail from there. So what I'm going to do is go left from here and I'm going to go down to Howes Road. And I'll come in from there. See, again, if you're somebody in a normal car in particular or somebody that, somebody that doesn't know this area, you're going to get massively lost trying to find this campground because it's taking you to well and truly the wrong area. Okay, here we are turning onto Howes Road. Let me change gears. So I've just turned onto Howes Road again. This road's not as bad as the last one it was trying to take me down, but I drove this yesterday and it's not the smoothest of smooth roads. Uh, it's not something I'd particularly fancy bringing a sedan down on a normal car. So again, this is taking me to, supposedly taking me to the Turpentine campground. It's quite a nice little ride down here, drive down here though, it's quite a soft, um, sandy road. Uh, by all means, you, if you've got a little bit of clearance, this road's still doable. More than doable, um, as long as you've got the clearance. It's definitely not one I'd want to bring a sedan or a hatchback down. 
Okay, so check a flag there is supposed to be my destination. Again, I'm still on Howes Road. The Abbots Falls Walking Trail comes out just ahead. Uh, you can see just to the left here is where it comes out and crosses the track and heads down that way. So that's Abbots Falls Walking Trail. Also very popular with motorbikes from what I've seen because the track's quite ripped up. You can see some of the angles I'm getting on here. Not real crash up for a um, sedan now. Somebody's speaking of sedans, somebody's lost something. Looks like an inner guard. I'm getting confused with this. It's telling me my destination is at the checker flag just here. But it's also telling me to pretty well do a U-turn down here. Now there's a trail just off to the left there. But it's telling me that the point I want is still ahead. So I'm going to continue on ahead. It's telling me to turn left here. Um, do you see a track here? So it's telling me to turn left here. So the track is meant to be there. There's no track there. So I'm kind of dumbfounded and lost as to where the VMS is actually trying to take you. So again, this is, this is one of the issues I've found with the VMS, uh, especially for those that don't know the area or don't know how to get exactly to the area from where they are and they want, um, the VMS to guide them there via road, well, I'm sorry, but that's not going to get you there. That's going to get you bloody lost. Uh, now, I'll get down the bottom here. I'll stop recording for a bit. I'll get down the bottom here. I'll do a U-turn. I hope that, yeah, that's recording. Um, and I'll head up to the Turpentine Campground from here, and I'll show you actually where to come in from the Turpentine Campground. Okay, so this is the bottom of Howes Road, where it's telling me to do a U-turn. Apparently, I've already passed the Pines Campground, uh, the Turpentine Campground. Am I going to hit that? Oh, that's close. Um, we've had somebody down here last night. I actually came down here yesterday and had a bit of an explore. And there was somebody camping down here yesterday. So it looks like they've packed up, but mostly they've, somebody's left some rubbish in the tree there. But... Yeah, again, this is meant to be a track. Uh, turpentine, pines, casserina, etc. are meant to be campgrounds that anybody can get into. No matter the type of vehicle you've got, they're supposed to be easy access campgrounds. Now, I just want to show you this section just up here. Um, and you'll be able to see whether or not you think this is an easy access campground. You know, it, even if it was the wrong spot and it was still an easy access camp, it wouldn't be so bad. But, you know, have a look at the ledge in front of me here. Let me zoom in on that. You know, having a look at that, that's not an easy access road at all. So, I think VMS has got a bit of work to do on that. Alright, I'll get up here. Again, I'll talk to you is when I get back up to the main road. Okay. So, if you do come down here and you're trying to find Turpentown, the Turpentine, or the Pines, or many of the others, I'll just quickly swing around here because there's a sign that I can show you. The VMS tells you to follow Howes Road. Now, it did this for the Pines as well, and it's done this for, um, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Casarina. Now there's a sign there that says dam. This is Wadigan's Forest Road in front of you. There's a sign there that says dam. If it tells you to turn right there, keep going straight ahead. Keep following it and I'll show you where to turn because this is definitely not the right spot. Okay, there's the sign for the Pines Picnic area. There's the turn. Again, continue straight. 
Okay, now we're cruising past the only headquarters campground. So what you're seeing to the right here is the only headquarters. There's the sign for it. As I zip past. A little bit further up. Now we're coming up into some other tracks. There's the turn for the Pines. Just up at uh, Pines Campground back there. Just here is the um, Old Mill Picnic Area. You can see the sign up there roughly. And then we turn in here to Casarina Turb uh, Campground. and right down here to Turpentine. So for the VMS to tell me that it's a long way from here, um, the VMS is not all that reliable. So now I'm gonna head home from here. Um, I think I'll head home and I'll probably do some more filming on the computer to show you how you can make this a bit more reliable and a bit better for yourself um, so that you're not getting lost and how to work out waypoints and things like that a better way than what the um, VMS shows you. Actually, before I do go home, I will show you one big issue I found with the off-road navigation. Oh, they've got a big camp set up. So let's change this over to the off-road mode. Let's exit that. Exit. Off-road. Always takes a little bit to get into this for some reason. See if I've actually got any waypoints already stored in here. I think I've taken them all out for the purpose of this video. And to clean my thing up. Right, now the big issue I found with off-road navigation is waypoints. Ah, bugger, I have none. Okay, so I've just pulled up... Um, near where my brother and I camped when we did our Wollombi trip uh, and almost and quite close to where I camped last night. Um, just going to give you a quick look at something here. That trail that the VMS was telling me to go to to get onto Turpentine Campground, this is the bottom of it. Um, again, I'm not going past this, but this is the bottom of it and this is what it's trying to tell you to take. So, um, you can see where the issues lie in regard to the camp, uh, the um, VMS not giving the correct locations. To guide a beginner down here or somebody with a sedan or hatchback, they're going to get stuck and they're going to end up in big trouble. So VMS really needs to rethink this, that side of things. Now, I might as well just do it from here. I've just dropped a waypoint at Cass Arena camp Campground. All right, I've got all my waypoints cleared because I'm resetting everything. So I've just dropped a waypoint for the Cass Arena Campground. Problem I find with, so you select that and then come up to go to. Problem I find with the VMS and its navigation off-road is that blue line. Now, it will guide me to Casarina Campground, but how the hell do I get there? If I don't know where I'm going, if I don't know the area, say, for example, when we did the Wallenby trip, you know, I've got no idea where the hell I was, and I want it to guide me from Wallenby to the Waddigans. How the hell am I going to get here following that? A straight blue line. So, in that sense, it's, the off-road mode is great that... Oh, excuse me, I've got the hiccups. Off-road mode is great that you can um, add all your waypoints in and things like that. But to use it to actually guide you straight to them and actually get you there properly is friggin' ridiculous. You know, I get that it's difficult for them to 
be sure of the tracks that you've got to take and all this sort of thing. But, come on, a straight line? Surely, and I know um, d -d 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 Gaia GPS or G GPS, whatever it's called, I know this can do it. It will pin to the nearest roads. So why is it not pinning straight out to that road there, that road there, and then out? Which, for most people, is the easy way to get there. Um, if Gaia GPS can do it and it's a free downloadable app, why can't VMS when you're spending 350 odd dollars for the unit? Um, that makes me think that the VMS is not worth the money, to be honest. I will show you a way around that once I get back on the computer. So, um, I have found a way where I can get that pinned road. Um, yeah, that pinned trail. While I'm on this note, I'll also mention that if you were to sit there and physically create a route um, to take you along that line, so you sat there and went, okay, I want, want it to go here, 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 and put pins in each and every spot to do that route, the VMS will only allow so many pins. So if you sat down with Google Maps, for example, or even Gaia GPS, and you import that route, Say the route's 5k long, it's got a thousand and one little turns in it, and it might only be a slight turn, the VMS will pin every single turn that you have to make, and therefore it will only allow a certain amount of pins, which therefore cuts down the actual route. Um, so again, there's another stupid thing with the off-road mode. Look, off-road's brilliant in the sense that it shows a hell of a lot more trails, you can drop pins. It shows walking trails as well as off-road road trails. Um, and it's not all just your standard on-road GPS. But that's what I'm, I'm finding where it lacks is the fact that you can't add a lot of pins. You get bugger all direction except for a straight line to get you to a location. And yeah, it, it just doesn't seem to be all that practical for a lot of things. Um, whereas the off-road, if you want to follow it, to, uh, the on-road mode, if you wanted to follow that to get to a campground or something like that, or a waypoint that it has stored, you can't necessarily rely on that being accurate. So, yeah, I'm, in that sense, I'm really disappointed with the VMS. I honestly am. But I have found something that can help you get around that. Um, when I get home, I'll do some filming on there and on the computer and I'll show you with the VMS and show you how that works. <coughs> um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So for now, I'm going to pack up. I'm going to head home um, or stop filming and head home. I'll show you the rest when I get back. Cheers. Alright guys, so I'm back home, as you can see, sitting in front of me computer. Um, now I'm going to go through and I'll give you a look at how I've worked out um, to import the waypoints and get better navigational um, assistance through the VMS using their street mode and how to import the waypoints better so that they're actually sorted into different folders or different areas so that they're easier to find. So hopefully the software works for me properly. Um, last time I did it, it didn't want to work. So hopefully it does this time. And I can give you a good idea of what to do here. All right, bear with me and we'll get it done. Okay, so I've gone through with my VMS and I've cleared all my waypoints and everything on there. I've basically returned it back to factory uh, with the exception of having the updated maps. So what I'm going to do here is show you in the Wadigan Mountains how to go through and add some more waypoints into here and then I'll show you how to import them into the VMS both with the way that um, VMS tell you to do it and the way I've found to do it so that it imports into your street mode. So start off, I'll go and drop a couple of waypoints, just a couple of quick ones. We've got Heaton's Lookout, Whoop. Heaton's Lookout just here. 
So you come up to the yellow pin, drop the pin, that's the wire ring of me, heat and look out. I know there's a large clearing just here. I'm not going to go adding full description to them at the moment. Uh, I can do that later. So there's a quick and easy way to add a couple of um, pins. I'm not going to go through and show you put all of them in, but I will have to do that before long. So then what you do, you'll notice that these have saved under the Wadigan Mountains. So in my places, you can go through and add folder like that like so name it whatever you want it for whatever area you're looking for um, i've already done that for Wadigan mountains blue mountains wiseman's ferry to wollombi so each of these contain all my waypoints and lookouts for these areas um so under Wadigan mountains i've now got gap creek heaton's lookout and the large clearing that i know of now you come up to the Wadigan's mountain and you click save place as so right click save place as make sure that is kml not kmz it's kmz yeah so make sure it's kml and then change it to wadigan mountains now as you can see i've already got one there i'm going to overwrite that now that's saved that's saved not only this but it saved everything under it now I've got to mess around and change this over so that it records a different screen. Okay, so this is the program GPS Babble. Um, this is what VMS tell you to use to copy from Google Earth KML files into the GPX file, uh, format in which they use in their off-road navigation. So Quite simply, we come through here. Um, okay, where have I even saved this stuff to now? Why the hell am I in downloads? Should be in documents. There we go. So, Wadigan Mountains KML. So, you import the KML file and then create an output. Let's just go. Uh, Wadigan's. And then you can see there that will export to GPX. And then that part's done. Next thing we've got to do is copy it onto the, VM, onto the VMS itself. So to copy these files onto, um, from your computer onto the VMS, you need to hook the VMS up to your computer using the data cable, not a power cable, but a data cable. And this cable will be supplied with the VMS unit. When you boot it up, it will normally go into your um, previous off, uh, previous navigation mode, be it street view or um, off-road. Exit that and you'll come up with this screen. So if you click the battery here, that will go and allow your normal modes, uh, your normal navigation on road or street uh, street or off-road modes if you click this one that will allow you data transfer usb disk mode as can be seen there now this should pop up all of a sudden in your windows as you can see this has come up here as the vms touring 700 hdx where is volume 20 blah 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 okay so you you get that part to start with um to try and do this the easy way though, I'm going to go back into Documents, Waypoints, and this is the one that I just created, the wadigans.gpx. I'm going to Control c to copy that, and then I can just click back because well, I was already in there. So, now what VMS tells you to do is go into VMS, GPX, Waypoints, and paste this into here. This will put it into your off-road mode. So these those waypoints that I just copied in will now show up in off-road mode on the VMS. But you can't access them in Street View. And as shown previously, when trying to get a um, 
directions from one place to one of your waypoints, you get a straight line. So I'm now going to show you how to do the same basic thing, but into um, street mode. So come back over into documents, then I'm going into the KML folder that I've got here, Wadigan Mountains KML. Again, control and copy. Back to the VMS card and go into drive. From there, you want content, uh, user data, POI. Now you'll notice these whole bunch here. I've got Camps 9 because Camps 9 was... When I spoke to uh, VMS about campgrounds such as the Pines, Turpentine and that being in the wrong spots, um, as I've shown you earlier in the video, they told me to download Camps 9. And they sent me a link, I don't remember what the link was now, I'm sorry, but they sent me a link to it and they told me to download it. Now as you can see, I've already got watergans.kml there. I'll quickly delete those because I don't want those ones. And I'm going to paste the new one in, Watergan Mountains. Okay, now I should be able to close all that off, reset the VMS, and that should then take me back, um, should allow me to go into the street mode and view uh, these waypoints in street mode. So give me a minute to restart the VMS and we'll get that worked out. Now, as previously stated, when you first boot the machine up, it will automatically go into your last mode. My last mode was Street View. First, though, I'm going to take you into Off-Road mode. So I'll click, click on the battery, and that runs this way for me. So that will effectively charge the VMS. It will come up as your computer is device not recognised, because in this point it doesn't recognise it. I don't know why, but it always takes a couple of goes for it to... Um, register for the off-road mode. Now, come into waypoints, there should be a list. You've got large clearing, Heaton's Lookout, Gap Creek Campground. They're the ones we just imported. So now we'll go back. Um, again, any of those, actually, any of those waypoints, as shown, go to, it probably hasn't found my location, and it gives me a straight blue line. That, to me, is totally useless if you don't know where you're going. So, exit. Now into street mode. My battery on this camera is about to die, so hopefully it does me just long enough. Okay, VMS street mode. We come down into menu. And we go to find. Find places. Just go custom search. In town suburb, uh, let's go Martinsville. Martinsville. Now we should be able to come down. Hello, list all places. No, I didn't want accommodation. I didn't press accommodation. So there's Camps 9, as you can see there. And they give, actually does give better locations. So we'll come through, come down to the bottom, wadiganmountains.kml. Open that up, and there's our points. So I want to go to Gap Creek Lookout, go, plan it. And as can be seen here, as can be seen there, it's giving me detailed route to that point. So uh, let's go straight up and zoom out a bit. So that's telling me from my place, turn by turn, now how to get to the Gap Creek campground. They are quite slow, these VMS units, but it works. Okay. 
So that's telling me now, turn by turn, exactly how to get into Gap Creek Campground. For anybody coming into a campground from an area well away from their spot, that's what's needed. And for off-road mode in particular, I think that's needed in general. So now you guys know how to import waypoints um, into your on-road mode or your street mode in the VMS and in the off-road mode and what it actually shows. You can also utilize these waypoints to create routes. So from one waypoint to the next, and this will give you a full length route for a longer journey rather than just a few pins that has been mentioned previously. So I hope you have found this video very useful. I'm gonna go through and make a whole heap of waypoints now and update all this stuff and get my VMS set back up the way I need it to be. So again, hope you found it very useful. If you have, please like and share it around so other people can find out how to get their stuff, uh, their VMS working better. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful and I hope it's shown you how to get more out of your VMS 700 HDX. Um, again, to me, it was quite confusing to start with that VMS only gave a straight line in navigation for the off-road mode. I think that's pretty stupid, personally. Um, but now I've found how to do that through the street mode. It makes life a lot easier. It may say something in the manual about this, but for me, how many guys actually read manuals? I've watched all their tutorials and stuff like that online, and nothing mentions anything about the street modes. So it mentions nothing about doing this. So for me, that makes it easy. Now I can set all my areas into Wadigan Mountains, Blue Mountains, um, Barrington Tops, Munmore Estate Recreation, whatever area it is I go to. I can save my waypoints in the VMS in off-road mode if I need to. Um, and then I can import them later into Google and do the same thing I've just done to import them back properly into the street mode. Or I can plan my routes completely in Google Earth and I can copy them straight into the street mode and get turn-by-turn -turn directions and a full route all the way through. Um, I did say that I was going to give my overall review on the, seven, the VMS 700 HDX at the end of this video. So... To start with, for a beginner that hasn't seen this video and hasn't worked this out, I think it's quite confusing. I had issues to start with with my reverse camera not working. The VMS wasn't detecting it. Um, again, the guys at Gosford four-wheel drive super center dealer there, uh, I can't remember the name of the actual place, but it's a battery place down there, I can't remember it. They've been brilliant. Um, but... Yeah, that was a bit of a disappointment for me. The navigation side of things off-road was a big disappointment. It was great that I can go through and I can put all my locations in and drop all my pins wherever I'm going. I can see all these different tracks that aren't officially on a road. And being that they're not on a road, you know, it's, it's going to be a bit harder for anything to show them up. But so far, the street view of the VMS seems to do pretty well. Um, with showing those things even if they're not on an official road. Um, and then again, I was very confused when it came to trying to find a campground. My initial um, introduction to that part was trying to find the Pines Campground. Now, I'd only ever entered the Waddingham Mountains from the northern end off Mount Fork Road. I'd never gone in through Martinsville. So I wanted it to guide me in through Martinsville doing that. And I knew that I wasn't anywhere near the pines, but it's telling me to turn off and go down, uh, what was it, bloody, one of the roads that I went down yesterday. Um, whatever, I can't remember the name of the road now, but it told me to turn off and go down there, which I know is not a two-wheel drive road. Um, so, yeah, I, that was a bit of a shock, and that made me think, hang on, there's something wrong here. And then I looked at Turpentine, Casarina only, and I contacted VMS about it <coughs> and explained to them that it's shown at about four kilometres away uh, from where the actual campgrounds are by road. And that it's taking you down tracks that 
are not suitable for a two-wheel drive vehicle when these locations are meant to be two-wheel drive accessible. So that's where VMS replied to me and they sent me a link for the Camps 9 part. They told me to download that. Use, what's the app thing that they called? The Navi Extras Toolbox and install, um, install Camps 9 into my VMS using the Navi Extras. So I did all that. I've got the Camps 9 on there now. But in all honesty, I think going through Google Maps, finding them through Google Earth, um, and pinning them and putting them in this way, I think it's going to be a hell of a lot easier for me. And then find them all in street mode rather than trying to find them through off-road mode or trying to rely on third-party software. If you know you're putting in the exact location, then it's taking you to that exact location. So, overall review, are they worth the $350-odd I paid for it? I can't compare it to a HEMA or anything like that, but I can compare it to things like Gaia GPS, which is a free downloadable app. And in all honesty, I think Gaia GPS might be a little bit easier. Um, you can open that on your computer, log into an account that links to your phone as well, and you can set things, routes and everything straight up on your computer, and they'll go straight onto your phone. So, Gaia GPS seems really good, and I think it's probably an easier option, and it's definitely a much cheaper option. Um, <coughs> I can't say that the VMS is a bad unit, but it is a little bit hard to work, I believe. Um, Again, again, like this stuff might be in the owner's manuals, but how many people actually sit down and read the owner's manuals? So, yeah, I, I just feel that they're a little bit hard to work for the price they're paying. There's certain things, especially in the four-wheel drive mode or the off-road mode, there's certain things where I believe it should be clipping to the tracks that are known. Even though it might not be an exact route, clipping it to that track will at least give you a hell of a lot better idea. But that's for VMS to work out, not me. Anyway, that's going to be it. Um, I'll go net through now. I'll edit this video, get it all put together, and I'm going to go through and put all my waypoints in properly. So I'm going to shut this video off here. So, yeah, take it easy, and I'll see you out there on the tracks. Peace.